Thank you, Madam, for kind words of introduction. I'm thankful to organizers, the local organizers, Dr. Sunil M. Jain and Dr. Bharat Sabu for inviting me to be part of this excellent meeting. The hypogonadism in primary care is a topic which is not given much importance, but it is something which is often overlooked. Hypogonadism implies deficient action of gonads. It may be at the level of testes or ovaries, or it may be at the level of controlling gland that is hypothalamic pituitary region. Irrespective of whether it is at the gonadal level or at the hypothalamic pituitary level, the result would be same. There would be lack of secondary sexual characteristics, sexual dysfunction, and or infertility. There are three stages in which a patient may need evaluation for hypogonadism. In adolescent years, for lack of onset, lack of progression, or lack of comple completion of puberty. In young adults and middle-aged persons, for evaluation of infertility. And in young adults, middle-aged individuals and past middle-aged indi individuals for sexual dysfunction. So these are the three broad categories. And today I shall be discussing the last part, the sexual dysfunction and the symptomatology associated with hormonal deficiency with particular reference to men. In past middle-aged lady, you have a dramatic presentation in the form of menopause. You do not have a corresponding dramatic andropause in men. The levels decline slowly with myriad presentations. And that is why it has not received the kind of attention which it deserves. The androgen deficiency syndrome, it indicates failure of testes to produce testosterone due to either an impairment at the central level or at the testicular level. And the prevalence in male Massachusetts aging study, it was 5 to 10 percent in men in their mid-30s, which is something which is not uncommon. As many as 10 to 15 percent individuals in their mid-30s have androgen deficiency syndrome features. Classically, it is said to be or to occur beyond 40 years of age. Some guidelines have said beyond 50 you look for androgen deficiency state, but majority of guidelines focus on individuals between 40 to 79 years. Beyond 79, it becomes elderly. The late onset hypogonadism is intrinsically linked to male hypogonadism. It is a group of signs and symptoms specifically due to androgen deficiency or impaired action of sex steroids at effective organs. This is one defi definition given for late onset hypogonadism in men. The symptoms are vague, non-specific, and commonly overlap with symptoms of aging. These include, but are not limited to, sexual symptoms such as low libido, erectile dysfunction, very commonly loss of muscle mass, bone density, depression, and hot flashes. So it is a myriad presentation, and it is not limited just to sexual dysfunction alone. In a population-based study of 3,000 plus men, key sexual symptoms, that is poor morning erections, low sexual desire, and erectile dysfunction, they are found to have a syndromic association with low testosterone levels, and if an individual presents with these symptomatology, one should investigate for late onset hypogonadism. The occurrence is much higher in obese individuals, in those with metabolic syndrome, and those with diabetes, with or without control. So, a study by Barrett reported a group of men between 40 to 79 years with total testosterone below 350 in 21% of diabetic men. 40 plus diabetic men had a prevalence of 21%, so it is a large chunk. 
as against 13% for non-diabetic men. In another study of symptomatic men beyond 73 years of age, Total testosterone below 300 was found in 64% of men with diabetes as against 38% non-diabetic counterpart. So diabetes is an important morbidity of hypogonadism. In a population-based study in Pomerania, that is a suburban population of German province, German state, it showed that men with low to total testosterone had high risk of incident metabolic syndrome. So there is two-way interaction. Metabolic syndrome is associated with low testosterone. And low testosterone had higher risk of incident metabolic syndrome. So cause and effect is both ways. Metabolic syndrome can lead to low testosterone. Low testosterone by causing sarcopenia, insulin resistance may lead to beta cell dysfunction and metabolic syndrome like picture and for this reason multiple guidelines suggest that in, in individuals presenting with metabolic syndrome testosterone sh screening should be considered just because they have metabolic syndrome what are the interactions between metabolic syndrome and androgen deficiency, leptin directly affects Leydig cell function causing hypogonadism. Inflammation is a part of metabolic syndrome. It is a pro-inflammatory state and that interrupts steroidogenesis in testes. Obesity has high aromatase activity in the adipose cells leading to conversion of total testosterone into estradiol. Estradiol has a potent inhibitory effect on hypothalamus and pituitary, causing hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Then, low H SHBG leads to low total testosterone. And this is an independent risk factor for development of metabolic syndrome and diabetes in years and months to come. Then, sleep apnea is common in obesity and metabolic syndrome. That causes blunting of hypogonadotropic secretion of GnRH, leading to central hypogonadism. Then opioid endogenous cannabinoid tone has an effect on LS secretion. And peripheral obesity leads to increased testicular temperature, thereby compromising its steroidogenic and spermatogenic activity. So these are the mechanisms through which metabolic syndrome can lead to hypogonadism. Then how androgen deficiency can lead to metabolic syndrome? As I said initially that sarcopenia is an important comorbidity or important effect of androgen deficiency. And most of the peripheral glucose disposal occurs in skeletal muscle. So sarcopenia would lead to insulin resistance, decrease peripheral glucose uptake. It would lead to insulin resistance, beta cell dysfunction, metabolic abnormalities like triglyceride elevation and as a result metabolic syndrome may be an effect of androgen deficiency and in Pomerania study a population based study low testosterone was associated with high risk of development of incident metabolic syndrome on follow up based on what we have discussed so far what are the treatment options Treatment option directed at obesity management, use of metformin, use of selective estrogen receptor modulators. As I discussed in one of the previous slides that estradiol leads to suppression of hypothalamic GnRH secretion and selective estrogen receptor modulators have antagonistic effect on estrogen action at the level of hypothalamus. And theoretically, they can correct hypogonadism secondary to estrogen action at the level of hypothalamus. And Guai et al. had reported use of clomiphene citrate leading to increase in LH, FSH, total testosterone, and free testosterone in men with secondary hypogonadism and erectile dysfunction. 
So metabolic syndrome associated hypogonadism may be benefited by use of selective estrogen receptor modulators like testos like clomiphene citrate and maybe letrozole as well. Then role of use of testosterone for management of metabolic syndrome. Since testosterone deficiency leads to sarcopenia and insulin resistance, so there is a possibility that use of testosterone in these patients who have hypogonadism, be it secondary or be it primary, would have a salutary effect on metabolic syndrome. It has been found that central obesity, glucometabolic control, improvement in lean body mass, improvement in insulin resistance, and improvement in peripheral oxygenation has been reported in patients suffering from metabolic syndrome who are given testosterone. However, the number of studies are limited, so it is premature to make a recommendation for use of testosterone on a routine basis in metabolic syndrome. But there is a sound theoretical and clinical evidence supporting use of testosterone. Here is evidence from six randomized controlled trials involving 483 patients with average duration of follow-up 57 weeks. It was found that testosterone supplementation decreased fasting plasma glucose, decreased triglyceride, decreased weight cir waist circumference in sub patients suffering from metabolic syndrome. So there is trial evidence suggesting that testosterone supplementation would have a salutary effect on metabolic component of metabolic syndrome. And one mechanism is possibly anti-inflammatory effect of testosterone supplementation and we know that pro-inflammatory state is responsible for insulin resistant and metabolic abnormalities in metabolic syndrome. Coming to diagnosis, the laboratory diagnosis and the cutoff for starting testosterone supplementation in patients with hypogonadism, late onset hypogonadism. Those who have total testosterone below 230 are candidates for testosterone between 40 to 79 years of age. The total testosterone should be done on two separate occasions between 7 to 11 a.m. in fasting state because by giving food, there may be 10 to 20 percent decline in total testosterone and there is a diurnal variation. So you should do two separate evaluations between 7 to 11 a.m. in the fasting state and those who have testosterone total above 350 no supplementation is required those who have total testosterone below 230 are candidates and those who have testosterone between 230 to 350 they require measurement of free testosterone free testosterone ideally the gold standard method is equilibrium dialysis, but it is, it is not widely available. Another method is calculation from measurement of total testosterone and sex hormone binding globulin. And if calculated or directly measured free testosterone is less than 65, that is an indication for starting testosterone in patients with late onset hypogonadism. Here are the, here are the guidelines from the endocrine society regarding testosterone therapy in hypogonadism. This is a consensus statement. And quote unquote, we recommend testosterone therapy for men. This is the expert committee recommendation. Symptomatic testosterone deficiency to induce and maintain secondary sexual characteristics and correct symptoms of hypogonadism after discussing the potential benefits and risk of therapy and of monitoring therapy and involving patient in decision making. This is the verbatim representation of what the endocrine society guidelines says. It says that we recommend against starting testosterone therapy. Recommendations against starting therapy is longer. In patients who are planning fertility in near term or have any of the following conditions, breast or prostate cancer, a palpable prostate nodule or induration, prostate-specific antigen more than 4, 
prostate specific antigen more than 3 in patients with increased risk of prostate cancer without further urological evaluation elevated hematocrit untreated severe obstructive sleep apnea severe lower urinary tract symptoms uncontrolled heart failure myocardial infarction or stroke within last 6 months or thrombophilia so there is a long list of contraindications and whenever you start treatment take the patient in confidence take the family in confidence and explain the pros and cons we suggest that when clinicians institute testosterone therapy they aim, aim at achieving testosterone concentration in the mid normal range that is a biochemical guide for replacement therapy so what are the take home messages men with metabolic syndrome are at higher risk of developing androgen deficiency and routine screening for testosterone is advised in this population screening with total testosterone in fasting state on two separate occasions the so physiology of androgen deficiency in metabolic syndrome is multifactorial involves inflammation enzymatic and endocrine derangements many options for concomitant treatment of both disorders exist control of obesity control use of metformin use of scrms and finally use of testosterone direct treatment of androgen deficiency with metabolic syndrome whether by diet exercise or surgery will improve testosterone levels conversely testosterone therapy has been shown to treat metabolic syndrome in multiple rtcs thank you